Lonnie Loveness, and this is the story of the Loveness Studio, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright in late 1955. My parents, Don and Virginia Loveness, had purchased 10 acres on a small lake near Stillwater, Minnesota, and with working plans in hand, in April of 1956, they moved our family of four into a small trailer on the site. There was still snow on the ground as tons of local limestone were delivered. The rock was large, rough, random-shaped limestone chunks in a huge pile. It was the rawest of building materials, but it was cheap. With almost no masonry experience and no cement mixer, their first attempts at laying stone were exhausting and frustrating. There was no turning back, however. With some outside help, a little practice, and incredible physical effort, the huge central hearth began to take shape. They developed a routine. D, as we called our father, would mix mortar as the sun came up in the morning, leave for his job at 3 m, while mother would lay rock and rake joints, racing to make progress before the mortar set up on its own. Returning from work, he would join her until dark, chiseling and fitting more stone. Over the summer, they were able to build about half of the outer stone walls. There were two little girls also to attend to, and mother made sure we were fed, clothed, and bathed, in a bucket or in the lake. There was no bathroom, just a makeshift outhouse. My sister Ty and I would amuse ourselves by playing king of the hill with our pet goat, but he usually won. We would help by collecting rock chips in a little bucket for cement aggregate. When winter came, we house sat for friends, and my father used their garage to build furniture Mr. Wright had designed for us. In the spring of 1957, we returned to the familiar routine of building for 14 hours a day. Over the second summer, the stonework was finished and the in-floor heat piping was installed. The wood framing began in July, and as fall approached, there was a race to get the structure enclosed. Every part of the house was custom made. The cabinetry, windows, doors, woodwork, and fixtures. By October, Dee was fitting the intricate window sash and ceiling pieces, and Mother was up on a ladder applying creosote. As November winds carried snowflakes into the living room, D put the last glass panel in place, and we moved from our tired old trailer into a work of art. It had been a two-year marathon, and when my parents visited Mr. Wright in Spring Green the following summer, they showed him photos. He had not been able to visit the site, but he was pleased when he saw the pictures. He was curious, and he asked, what did it end up costing? My mother had kept meticulous records, and when she told him the total was $18,000, or $2,000 under his estimate, he laughed and said, You know, I've been practicing architecture for 60 years, and that's the first time this has ever happened to me. Their reward from Mr. Wright for doing such a good job on the studio was plans for three more buildings. And although they were excited at the prospect, it would be 15 years before they built again, a modified version of the Seth Peterson Cottage in Wisconsin. In the meantime, our family settled into our new home, and my parents grew even closer to Mrs. Wright and the Taliesin Architects, becoming unofficial members of the fellowship. My mother recounted many stories about that relationship, and we've included them in my new book growing up right. I hope you enjoy it. (laughs) 